So welcome again for our continuation in trigonometry 3. We have already looked at trigonometric identities and I want us to look at uh, trigonometric equations. Therefore, before we continue very much, I would like to, to say that for a trigonometric equation, equals to k then we have b times x plus or minus a certain angle here like that or it can be a cosine equation whereby we have chi cos b x plus or minus an angle theta in this general form of an equation we say that amplitude of that wave equals to k if we draw this equation then it will be having an amplitude of this value it should be having an amplitude of this value and the phase angle the phase angle will be the angle here whether we have minus or plus, that absolute value of theta, that absolute value of theta. Then we have what we call period. The period of the trigonometric wave will be 360 divided by the value of B. 360 divided by the value of B. We can just take an example. State the amplitude, the period, and the phase angle form. The phase angle form. This equation y equals to y equals to four sine. 20 so x plus 20 therefore the value here where k is is a 4 therefore we can say amplitude solution now amplitude equals to 4 because it should be the value of the constant here again the period t period t will be 360 divided by the value before x and it is 1 in this case Therefore, the period will be 360 degrees. And finally, the phase angle. The phase angle will be just the angle here, which is degrees. The angle there, which is 20. So the phase angle in this case is 20. Therefore, that is how we extract these quantities from an expression of this nature. We can now check an example of solving a trigonometric equation. Solving a trigonometric equation, and uh, we can just use this example. Use this example. Solve for x in. Solve for x. Solve for x. We have cosine and we have sine on the other case. 
and we had said in the identities where we say that sine theta plus theta squared equals to 1 we had said that to get sine theta squared we can just have 1 minus cosine squared of theta so in this case instead of sine x squared we can just have 1 minus cosine of x squared therefore we can rewrite the whole expression using 2 cos x equals 2 instead of this we have 1 minus cosine squared of x plus 2 so with that now we can let we can let cosine of x to be something like t just an unknown like t and with the t now we can have 2t here equals to 1 minus t squared plus 2 so now we can rearrange this equation until we get t squared starting here then plus t 2t and this one which is 3 when brought to the other side it becomes a negative so that on one side will remain with a 0 <coughs> therefore t squared becomes this side <coughs> plus 2t then minus <coughs> minus 3 because 1 plus 2 is 3 we bring it to this side it becomes a minus that side has remained with a 0 so now we can solve this quadratic equation can solve that quadratic equation and then we can prefer to use completing the square method so that people may at least remember it. the factorization method is very simple so we can say t squared plus 2t then we take negative 3 to the other side where it becomes positive then now we complete the square here. We make this one a perfect square. We have a, we make a perfect square by adding a constant such the constant is given by b out of 2 squared. And the value of b is 2 here. Therefore, 2 out of 2 squared becomes 1. Therefore, we add 1 to both sides of this equation. Therefore, here we have t squared plus 2t plus 1 equals to 3 plus 1 so the one we had it to both sides therefore now this becomes 4 so we can factorize this one and factorizing a perfect square we just take the square root of this part which is t plus the square root of this part which is 1 squared therefore the factorized form of this part is t plus 1 squared equals to 4 we can take square root of both sides where we will have t plus 1 being equal to plus or minus 2. This means t will either be t will either be 2 plus 2 minus 1 which is 1 or negative 2 minus 1 which is negative 3. Negative 3. But remember, but remember that uh, remember that <coughs> t equals to cosine of x. Therefore, we can say cos x is either one or cos x equal to negative three. <coughs> so, if cos x is one, then we can get x by taking the cos inverse of 1 cos inverse of 1 cos inverse of 1 and this gives us z cos inverse of 1 which gives us z cos inverse of 1 which gives us z
Maybe he'll visit the fish a little bit. Let me just check something. Let me check something. So we are talking. Subscribe to Shifting Grades and share the link. Thank you.